What's going on, everybody? How's everyone doing today? Let's see, we are live. We are live today. I believe we're live. <laughs> According to, yes, we are live. Okay, fantastic. How's it going, everybody? This is Jesse, and you guys are on my painting with Jesse Page here on Facebook and on YouTube. Just going to give it a few minutes before everybody jumps on here. I'm on a little bit later than I usually like to jump onto my live streams, but that's all right. No big deal. Just had to get me a little coffee prepared before we start today. Throat's a little bit on the dry side. <clears throat> Not that coffee helps too much. Probably should have uh, gotten some lemon tea or something like that. So, but that's okay. All good. But all right, guys. We're gonna get started here in a few minutes. Oh, my comments. Let me jump over to my comment section. There we go. And then I was looking over my comment or the area where my, where my comments are supposed to be and I hadn't seen any, so I was going, what's happening here? What's happening? Crystal Dornan, back from Alberta, Canada. How's it going, Crystal? How are you? Christine Curtis Kellen says, needed some awesomeness today. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you for being here. And then Janine Bazzi Quagliano, or is that Jessica Quagliano? I'm not sure if you're just tagging her in the uh, comment or what. How's it going, Lisa? Lisa Guarino's in the house. Sue Kripe is in the house. How are you? Let's see. Tracy Toes from Simcoe, Ontario, Canada. I believe you've painted with me before, Tracy, if I'm not mistaken. Janavi Amara. What's happening, Janavi? Anyway, folks, so in a little bit. Once we actually get going, I'll talk about all the supplies and everything else that we'll be using today. But for now, we'll just wait it out a little bit. Now, I've got a bunch of stuff that I'm adding. I know I keep talking about it every, every, every time we have one of these, I talk about the events that are coming up. I don't have a lot of them currently on the schedule for March. All that's going to be added over the next few days. So stay tuned. Uh, for i just just been super busy. I haven't had a chance to actually update the calendar. So uh, also working on some other projects that I'm going to be adding to the calendar towards the end of March. I am going to be doing a brush work tutorial in about a week, week and a half. So for those of you that are interested in learning about brushes, the types of brushes there are, uh, what brushes to use when, what each one can do, that kind of stuff, make sure you guys are paying attention to the page because I'm going to be posting that Give it a give it a couple days or so, maybe two three days, maybe maybe sooner. If I have a chance, I'll post it up tomorrow. But I am going to be doing a session where we purely talk about brushes and we go over some brush work, some techniques, and things like that. Brush technique. Okay, so make sure you guys are uh, paying attention to that. Right, look for the uh, for wait for when I post the event on the page, and then I'm also planning on doing a. Tutorial just on shading, how to shade, uh, how to, for example, uh, let's say you've got a piece of fruit sitting on a table, you've got a, a, a lemon that's rounded over, right? You got some light on top, shadow underneath. There's a gradual change from the light side to the dark side. So I'll be talking about, I'll be showing you guys how to how to shade. I'll, I'll also be doing another tutorial on how to blend. All that stuff is coming up. All that is in the works. So for those of you that are interested in those, make sure you guys. Stick around and look, be on the lookout for those. I know I've had a lot of requests for, uh, for technique tutorials. So those are coming, okay? Along, of course, with other fun stuff like the horse painting today. So anyway, you guys be on the lookout for that. Who else is on with us today? What's happening, Rosemary Alonzo? Welcome back. How are you, Kristen Jones Frost from Idaho City, Idaho? Hope everything is fantastic. Fantastic out in Idaho. It's a little rainy out here in Southern California today. Woke up to some rain. It's been cloudy all day, raining off and on. But I like this weather at least. If it rained once a week, I'd be happy with it. But just once or twice a week. Then the rest of the days can be sunny. I'd be, I'd be happy with that. Year-round, we can have that. I'd be good with it. But who else, guys? Somebody's saying we should paint a puggy or a puggle. I think she says... Puggle. I'm not sure what a puggle is. What's a puggle? <laughs> Let me know. Let me know what a puggle is. Maybe, maybe we will. Kimberly Lynn, how's it going? 
Oh, hi, hi, Morgan. How are you? It's not Kimberly Lynn. It's Morgan. Hi, Morgan. Welcome back. Roxanne Chilton from Minnesota. What's happening, Roxanne? All right, everybody. It is officially three o'clock. Let's get this show on the road. My name is Jesse. You guys are on Painting with Jesse here on Facebook and on YouTube. I'm live streaming to both platforms. A couple of things on that. For those of you that want to be able to pause and back up, during the live stream, you want to do you want to go over to YouTube if you're not there already. YouTube allows you to back it up, back up live video. Feels like my lighting is a little off. Give me one second. Let me let me. Oh, it's my it's my laptop. That there we go. My laptop screen is a little dark. Uh, anyway, YouTube allows you to do allows you to pause and back up, and then of course jump back ahead during a live video. Facebook does not. If you guys are interested in doing all of that, make sure you guys jump over to YouTube. It's the same channel, same uh, name, Painting with Jesse, J-E-S-S-E. -S -S -E. You guys have a little time to jump over there if you're not there already. Uh, this session is being recorded. So as soon as it's over, uh, you can find it under the live tab on the main Painting with Jesse page or on the YouTube page. Okay, once again, this session is being recorded. And as soon as it's over, I just hit the save button and it gets over to my Facebook and to my YouTube. Okay, that question is going to come up repeatedly in the comment section. If you guys see it come up, please, if you can, help me out and answer the question for people as it pops up. The most common question that you guys are going to see in the comment section. But okay, what are our supplies for today? I'm going to be painting with acrylic paint. If you guys have a different medium, perfectly fine. Watercolor, crayons, colored pencils, markers. Uh, oil paint probably wouldn't be suitable today unless you're doing everything, you're planning on doing everything in one sitting, which you could. But um, anyway, whatever medium you guys have is perfectly fine. I'm going to be painting on a canvas, 16 by 20 inch canvas. I'll talk about that here in a little bit, but that's what's sitting over to the right of me. It's the same size as what's on the original. I am going to be teaching you how to draw this completely from scratch. Okay, we're going to start with the background first, <clears throat> then I take out a blow dryer. Um, so I can speed up the drawing process and then we're going to draw over that background. After we've drawn in the horses and done a little bit of filling in, outlining and filling in, then we're going to work on the um, sunset, the trees. We're probably going to leave the birds for very last, but then we, after we do the sunset and the trees, we're going to go back to the horses. We're going to be able to jump around a little bit, but uh, that's, the, that's the general um, process of how we're going to be doing this. Uh, be careful, folks. There are scammers that like to pop up in the comments section. Let me block this guy right here and then delete his comment. Okay, so from time to time, although they don't, um, they don't pop up as often anymore, we do get sc uh, scammers that pop in to the um, live feed, so just be careful. There's a rabbi con that's going on here and posting links. Don't click on those, okay? I've, I've been able to, to uh, get rid of the majority of scammers, but we still have some that come in from time to time. So anyway, be careful. Don't click on any links in the comments. All right? But anyway, back to what I was saying. Uh, that's, that's the order that we're going to be doing the painting in, the colors that I'm going to be using. Now, you don't have to use the same exact colors that I've got. Whatever you have, feel free to use. Modify the painting in whatever way you want. These are the general, general colors that I'll be using. Okay, my background, the sky has a little bit of light blue in it. I've already got some pre-mixed light blue in here, but I am going to be mixing it during the live. I've got a dark phthalo blue, okay, dark blue, and some white that I'll be mixing for that light blue in the background. Then I'll be using a little bit of the, excuse me while I grab paper towel, got a little bit of wet paint on me. Uh, I'll be using some of the dark blue up on top, the very top of the of the of the sky. Then we're going to transition into a little bit of a reddish violet color. And then that transitions into a, an orange and then goes into a yellow all the way down to the bottom. Okay. So those are the colors that I'll be using, but let me, let me run through those really quickly. I've got an orange, whatever orange you got, whatever version of these colors you got, that's what you're going to be using, or you're going to be mixing a little bit, but I've got a, a red an orange blue. Okay. A dark blue. Of course, I've got some black. I've got some yellow, and then I've got a little bit of white, okay? 
So those are my, my main colors. I'll be mixing a little bit here and there. You'll see that as we're as we go along. Uh, for the sun, the setting sun, for those of you that don't want to freehand that, you can use a can, you can use the bottom of a, a water bottle, you know, something that's wide enough or big enough to be able for, so you, to be, for you to be able to trace that. So there's plenty of time to grab one of those when you have a chance. Again, if you don't want to do the sun freehand, I might teach you guys how to do that freehand. No, I will be teaching you guys how to do that freehand. But for those of you that want to use something to trace, again, a water, uh, a water bottle, a can, uh, a solo cup, anything that's round and that's about the right size um, of that moon. Okay, again, I'm going to be using a blow dryer. I have one handy over there. If you guys don't have one, don't worry about it too much. Let's talk about my brushes. So I've got synthetic bristle brushes that sit, that sit in a water cup. Now, normally I don't put them into the water cup until we start. I try to minimize how much time my brushes sit inside that water cup because even sitting in the water cup for a while, they could deform the bristles a little bit. I'll talk about that a little bit more later. Okay, but anyway, the, the brushes that I'm going to be using, I've got a one inch flat brush here. This is going to be primarily for my background. I might use this guy to fill in the horses a bit. This is a one inch synthetic bristle brush, okay? Again, all my brushes, all the brushes that you're gonna see here are synthetic bristle brushes. I've got a number eight flat. You don't have to have these exact brushes now. These may even be a little tiny bit different than what I listed in the comments section or the uh, discussion board details for the painting. Don't worry about it too much. This thing's about half an inch in width and flat just refers to the shape. Okay, it's a flat brush. Typically, they're kind of rectangular in shape, maybe a little bit squarish. It just depends. Okay. Then I've got a number eight filbert, filbert brush. This has a rounded head. This guy right here is nice and rounded. Now, if you guys, again, I think I listed number five or number six, anything close to this is fine. The main thing here is you want this to have a nice rounded head over the top. Then I've got two round brushes, what you call round brushes. They're just skinny, pointy things. I've got a number three and a, and a zero. These are good for making detail work. Primarily, we're gonna be using these for the trees and then for the birds, okay, when we get to that point. So those are the brushes. Uh, one thing you don't want to do, you wanna make sure you don't do, is do not allow acrylic paint to dry on your brushes. So in between steps, you wanna make sure you put your uh, brushes into some water. Again, I use a water cup. My brushes live in there throughout the entire process. At the end, I take them out, clean them up, and then uh, set them out to dry. But anyway, we're gonna get moving here pretty quickly. The way that I do this, for those of you that aren't familiar with the process, I outline a step over here, then I give you guys a little time to implement it on your end. Okay, we go through that like that through the entire process. I implement a step, I give you guys some time, usually about two minutes. It just really depends on the step, how complicated it is, you know, the complexity of that step. And then in between those steps, I do answer questions. I come over to the comment section. I monitor the feed uh, with my laptop. And as you guys post your questions, say hello, et cetera, I will um, respond to you guys through there. All right. So, okay, let's get moving. Let me adjust the screen here so that we got the um, main image magnified here. What we're going to do first is we're going to start on that background as I mentioned. Okay, so if you guys notice the background has a really nice light blue, this in here, we're going to start with that. That light blue actually starts from the top, comes down a few inches. Again, just want to, just want to repeat that I've got a 16 by 20 inch canvas that I'm working with. Whatever you guys have, obviously you will be um, making adjustments on yours as needed. But on my 16 by 20 inch, from the top here, I've got about four and a half, maybe, maybe five inches of this light blue. Nothing super specific. Don't worry about it too much. Just you're going you're gonna to put down a light blue band of color. Now, I mentioned I've already got some light blue mixed on my plate. But for those of you that have a dark blue and some white, we're going to mix a little bit of color. And I think I accidentally picked up some red. That's all right. Oh, let me show you guys what I do. Hold on one second. Give me one second. So I've got my colors laid out on my plate here. Okay, again, these are kind of the, 
These are the primary colors that I showed you earlier. I've got some black, of course. Those are the colors for the horse. I've got some red that I'm going to be mixing with a little tiny bit of blue for that kind of a almost red-violet color that's in the background. I've got some orange. I'll be mixing this with some red for what's mostly directly behind the horses now. You can see a little bit of that over here. Okay, it's mostly directly behind the horses. Again, red and the, and the orange. I'll be mixing some orange with some yellow for what's down in here. Okay, and it gradually becomes more yellowish as we go down to the bottom. But those are the color mixtures or the colors that I'm going to be using for this. Right now, I'm going to be mixing some of this dark blue, phthalo blue, with some white to create that background. So what I did with my big one inch here, I grabbed a bunch of paint. Now, one thing that I never talk about, it's really, really rare that I bring this up. You want to avoid, with your brushes, you want to try to avoid getting paint down inside the ferrule. Okay, this little this metal piece on mine that wraps around the bristles. You want to try to avoid getting paint down in there like I just did. Okay? It prolongs the lifespan of your brushes. You want to make, primarily keep your paint up towards the top. Okay, a little bit here and there, no big deal. But if you constantly get paint down inside there, you can ruin your brushes. So anyhow, scoop up a bunch of the white, bring it over. I'm going to grab a little bit of the blue with the same brush. Okay, I just scoop this, whoops, scoop my brush right into the paint. Maybe put it over to the side. Now I'm going to do this. I'm trying to create a nice light blue. Once I have the color that I want, I'm going to go ahead and apply it to my background. Now we're going to be painting for approximately two hours and 40 minutes today, and that's an approximation. Could be a little less, could be a little bit more. Don't worry if you if you can't paint that long. Let's say you started and you're going, oh my gosh, what? It's going to take forever. Don't worry about it too much. Paint for as long as you can. If you have to leave, that's all right. You can come back and paint with the recorded version, which you'll find here on the Painting with Jesse page and on my YouTube page. Okay? So again, paint for as long as you can. And then if you have to take off, no big deal. So there's the color that I want. I'm going to take my brush and then I'm going to do this right across the top. I'm going to raise my the neck on my easel a bit. I can start right here, right at the top. I'm going to work my way down. I'm going to teach you guys a little bit of blending today. At least one way that you can blend. There are different ways to, to blend, different techniques to blending. We're going to do a little blending in between these transitions. Okay? So I came down again about four inches, four and a half or so. And I'm using these long horizontal brush strokes because I want to create a nice smooth finish to my background. Okay, once I come down as far as I want, and maybe I'll bring this down just a little bit more. Okay, I'm going to come around like this, paint my edges, both left and right. Okay, over here too. And then I want to do the top edge. When I do my drawing part of it, I'm going to be drawing with chalk. Okay, probably, uh, yeah, I'll be using a white piece of chalk to draw. Easiest way to draw on a canvas or on paper when it's kind of a temporary drawing is to do it with chalk. It's easy to correct mistakes on that. But if you've got a pencil, you want to use a pencil, that's perfectly fine. All right, so there's my background. Let me take, take a little step back, make sure that it's even. Or as even as I'd, it doesn't have to be perfectly even, but let's even this out a little. There we go. Now, what I say about my brush? Once I've done, what I do with my brush, I stick it in my water cup. Okay, and there it's going to sit until I need it again or until I'm done with the project. We don't want that paint to dry on, the dry on the bristles. That's the quickest way to ruin your brushes. Okay, so take about a minute and a half on that. Let me get over to, um, to the comments section. Again, guys, I wanna welcome everyone. Thank you all for being here. I really do appreciate it. My name is Jesse. If you're new to the page, either here on Facebook or on YouTube, please say hello in the comments. Let me know where you're 
joining us from and maybe who's hanging out with you today. Okay. Also, if you're celebrating a birthday or an anniversary or something, let us know. I know we've got a bunch of horse lovers in the house today, and that is fantastic. What's happening, Penny Colt? How are you? No worries. Whenever you get a chance, I hear you. Okay. Somebody's saying the top of your piece is blocked by the screen. Okay, let me uh, let me adjust that. Thank you very much for letting me know here. Whoops. How's that? Probably a little bit better. All right, a little higher. Making a little adjustment to the um, position of the camera here. There we go. All right. So we are just about ready to start applying some of this violet color color that's there in that background. So what's happening? Mo Moni Hernandez Garcia. Hello to your son. What's happening, Jesus? Let's see. There we go. Somebody says perfect. I believe it's, I believe uh, I got everything in view here. Yeah. I'm, I can see it here. So I think we're good. All right, here we go. So next step, we're going to create this next band of color, this violet-ish color in there. Now, you don't have to, like I mentioned earlier, you don't have to match the exact same colors that I've got on my painting. If you want to change it up a bit, feel free to do so. It is your painting after all. Maybe you've got a wall in your house that you're trying to match the colors on. Maybe, you know, you've got your own idea about how this painting should look like. Well, one thing I forgot to mention earlier, well, let me cross in front of the camera here. Paper towels, very important. Always have extras. I use paper towels not only to clean messes up, but I also use them to clean up my brushes. So I just pulled the brush out of my cup after swirling, swirling it around a little bit in there, cleaning up any of the uh, extra paint. Just kind of doing this. Don't be too harsh with your brushes, right? You want them to last a long time. Squeeze out any extra paint. So I'm using the same brush that I used a moment ago. My plate. When I made that mixture, I used a separate plate for that. I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to take my brush here. I'm going to grab some red. Okay, so just coming over here and doing this. A little bit of red. And again, if you want to change your background colors, please feel free to do so. There's some red. Now I'm going to take my brush. I'm just going to take a little bit of my dark blue. Not a lot. A little tiny bit. Okay, I'm going to put my blue over to the side. Now I slowly start bringing some of that blue into my red. So I take, take a little blue, bring it over, and I'm slowly mixing these together to create kind of a, a deeper, deep red, almost like a, almost like a really, uh, more like a slightly violet red. Let's call it that, or almost a fuchsia color. Yeah, it's probably more of an appropriate name for it, fuchsia. But yours could be just red if you want. Yours does not have to be the same color as mine, okay? I just want to repeat that. So what I'm going to do with this now, now watch what I do here. I'm not going to take this color and put it right here on this edge, right along that edge. I'm going to come down a little bit. I'm going to come down here. Okay, I'm going to come across. Now, with that same paint that's still on the brush, I'm going to work my way just a little bit down. Now I'm going to come up. As I'm doing this, I'm spreading the paint across the canvas. By the time I get to the top where the blue the light blue is, there isn't that much paint left on my brush. I still have some paint on there, but not as much as when I first set the brush down onto the canvas. So now what I do is I'm going to start overlapping a little bit by moving back and forth and moving upwards a little bit. I'm actually creating a layer that's really light with this color. And so the color that's underneath it starts to blend in with it. And this requires a little bit of practice sometimes, but just a nice feathering stroke. And then I move up a little bit more. 
and there's a lot less of that paint on my brush now. So now we got a nice little layer of this blended color where the two areas blended a bit. Now this line doesn't have to be perfect. It could be slightly off, right? It is, a, it is my sky and there's going to be some variation in color up there. It's not like we're creating a flag where everything's perfectly straight. Bands on a flag. Okay, then I'm just going to come down here a little bit. I'm going to come down maybe, maybe about three inches total, three and a half. Something like this. Again, I still have very little paint on my brush. Notice I'm doing, going, doing this back and forth thing over the same area each time that I brush across the surface, more of my paint lands on the canvas. More of my paint sticks to the canvas. Okay? So up in here, I've got a little slightly blended area. And I obtained that by having very little paint left on my brush when I went up into that area. Okay? Now, of course, what did I do earlier with my blue? I wrapped around the edges. So just to match, I'm going to come over to the side here. Come over to the other side. The exact thickness of this color on your background can vary a little bit. There's nothing exact. It could be larger than mine. It could be smaller. No big deal. All right. So you guys got about a minute before we move on to the next color, which is going to be, oh, don't, I, I haven't forgotten yet. This blue, we'll be adding this here in a little bit, giving this a little bit of time to dry. Mine's pretty much dry. But once we get done with all this orange in here, we're going to come in and add a layer of this dark blue up in here. Okay. Mine's already dry. My paint was so thin that I spread it so thinly that it and my root like my studio is a little on the warmer side so all this is nice and dry now but all right about a minute here we go oh stream yard not even sure why that's up there give me one second sorry about that oh that's what somebody said ah uh, ha, 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 ha. let me see if I can get that out of there we don't need that there we go. That's what somebody meant. That's what you guys were talking about when you were telling me something was blocking it. There we go. I didn't know that it was the StreamYard logo. Yeah, no good. Let's, let's adjust this so we get the maximum amount of canvas in view. There we go. Thank you for letting me know. We don't want that, but okay, let's go to the next level, next layer of color. So I've still got some orange on my brush or that, or not orange, but the uh, violet, red violet mixture that I created a moment ago, this fuchsia color. Okay. I'm going to take some of my orange now. Okay. So this is the next layer of color that comes next. So I'm just scooping up a bunch of orange here like this. I bring it over to the side. Okay. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this. Mix some of this color that I've got already mixed over on the side. I mix those two together so it's a color kind of in between. Okay, orange with a little bit, a little bit of that fuchsia, and I'm getting paint all over my handle. Let me clean that up a little. Okay, so here we go. Right in here. So I come down a little bit. Just like before, I start a little lower. And I work my way up. So as I move upwards, there's less and less paint on my brush. Then I'm going to bring this up into that fuchsia area. So that the two colors start to blend. And you can bring this up as high as you'd like. You'll get the feel for it once you have your color in there. Remember, most of this is going to be covered up by your horses anyway, so don't worry too much. You don't forget to do your, your sides.
There we go. Now this, this is already already a little bit lower than on the original. This band, this color here, again, no big deal. And I just want to emphasize that this is one way of blending colors that come together okay, along their edges. Okay, now I'm simply going to take some yellow, okay, maybe a little, actually a little bit of orange, same brush. I'm not too worried about it just yet. I will clean up my brush in just a moment. I'm in introducing a little more orange over here, mixing it a little bit with some of that previous color that I have. Okay, now again, kind of, this isn't that big of a deal that these two colors are almost identical. So the blending part of it isn't that crucial. Now then the other thing is this, I want, to, I want you guys to notice something. And I don't know if you can, you won't be able to tell just yet. Probably as it begins to dry a little bit more. The, color, the paint that I used over here is primarily, um, it's called a mas the master's, master's Touch acrylic paint. The Master's Touch. It's a little bit glossier than what I'm using over here. So there is going to be a little bit of a difference between the two paintings. There's going to be a difference anyway, but that is one difference that you might notice. This is going to be a little glossier. It's the paint that I use in some cases. And then this one's going to be a little bit, a little bit uh, more of a matte finish. But all right, I'm going to clean my brush a little bit in my water cup. And all I'm doing is this. When I clean up my brush, I just kind of swirl it around inside that water cup. Take a paper towel, clean out that extra water. Now I'm going to grab some yellow, lots of yellow here. And now watch what I do. I've got some of this orange, mostly orange mixture here on this little bottom edge of my plate. Just kind of mix those two colors together a little bit. It's giving my yellow slight orange hue. Here I am going to come down a little bit further and work my way up. So this is something you'll want to practice. But as you, the more you practice, obviously just like with everything else, the better you'll get at it. Now these two colors, so I'm, I'm basically blending colors when they're still wet. You can also do this technique here, almost identical when, it, when the color's already dry. Let's say one of these areas is already dry. I come in with a wet color and do the same exact process, you'll get kind of a similar, a similar effect. All right. Then, of course, let's do the edges. Then what I'm going to do, grab more yellow. Now I'm just going to go all the way to the bottom. It's up to you if you want this to be mostly yellow, a little or a little bit of yellow with a little, little bit of orange in there still. I'm going to continue to have, make sure I have a little bit of orange all the way down in my mixture, but it could be mostly yellow. Just be careful though. If you go too yellow, then you have you have the color the uh, color for your sun that might be too similar and it won't stand out as much. You could all you could you could also add some white to the yellow that you use for the sun, and that will will make it stand out a little bit if you have too much yellow in your mixture as you work your way down. So again, just bring some more yellow in here, letting it mix a little with that orange. It can be a little swirly if you want. In other words, you don't have to perfectly blend the colors. That swirliness allows there to be a little bit of a variation in color as you work your way down. Now 
And if there's a little bit of more orange, like I just got a little bit more down in here, a little streak of that orange, that works perfectly. Happy little accident. By allowing some of that color, when you mix your, when I mix my orange and my yellow, I didn't let those two colors completely blend together to form one solid color. And what that did is it allows some of that to happen. Make sure I got all my edge over here. Okay. So you guys know, you guys noticed I did my right and my left edges and the top edge. I didn't do the bottom edge okay, underneath. I didn't do that. When I'm all done with the painting at the very end, I'll do that bottom edge, the underneath edge in black. Okay. But anyway, all right, you guys get a couple of minutes here to kind of catch up, refine your background a little bit. Make sure you guys take a little, take a look at it, take a little step back. Make sure you like what you've got. Make little adjustments if you need to. Daisy Cruz and her daughter, Isabella Cruz. How's it going, Daisy and Isabella? Hope you guys are having fun today. I know I am. All right, so who else do we have on here? Guadalupe Garcia, what's happening? Guadalupe, how are you? Bonnie Forner, you're very welcome. Oh, is that what they were talking about, a puggy earlier? Gloria Marie says, pugs are adorable. I have a pug named Milo. Pugs are definitely adorable dogs. Love little pugs. Is that what I'm, I'm assuming that that's, that was the comment somebody made earlier when they said, I think it was a puggy. So yeah, puggies are cute. Not going to lie. That would be a fun painting to do. Ruchika Gupta, how's it going? D Bosco, hello to you. All right, everyone. I'm going to take my blow dryer here and speed up the drawing process. Okay. Uh, it should take maybe a minute or so, but I, whenever you want to uh, speed up your drawing, Nice little blow dryer comes in handy. So we got one of these here in the studio. I'm just gonna go through here and make sure our background is nice and dry before we actually start to, uh, actually, I apologize. I'm gonna do that blue band up on top, but that's okay. We can do this after I dry the background because that's not gonna be in our way when we draw the horses. All right, really quickly, I'm going to take, let's see, I'm going to take my flat number eight, okay? I'm just going to grab a little bit of this, my dark blue here, don't need a lot. Okay, just going to grab a little bit of this. I'm going to start here at the top. Now, I like to spread this paint to thin it out a bit. The darker color is here towards the top and as, as, we move, as we move our way down, it becomes a little lighter. So what I'm going to do is this. I'm just gonna spread the brush across and just making sure that it's nice and solid near the top, okay? And again, this is going to vary a little bit from person to person. You can come down as much as, you, as you'd like. But once you get to, once you get close to how, you know, how wide you want it, you want to start thinning it out. It's a similar process to what we use down below. You want to make sure you use up most of the paint on your brush. Once most of it is gone, you can start bringing that layer down by 
by feathering over the same area, making sure there's very little paint on your brush so that you can start creating a nice light coat of paint. Really, really light. So right now this is almost a dry brush. Once you add the, um, the stars and stuff, once we add those stars, it'll start looking more like a sky. Okay, now I'm gonna take this blue, I'm gonna come over to the side. Now this is all optional. This is what I'm doing right now is optional. On my edges like this, not everyone likes to do this. I'm going to the top as well. Some people like to leave their, the sides of their canvases white, and that's okay. No rule says we got to paint our sides also. Okay, so anyway, that's pretty much that with the blue part. What did I say about once you use a brush, stick it back into your water cup. All right. So you guys got about 30 seconds on that. Now I want to, before I actually start with the drawing part of it, I'm going to be drawing my horses in chalk. Okay, this is a lot easier to erase, as I mentioned earlier. If you don't have a piece of chalk, then go and uh, do yours in pencil. That works as well. The main thing is you want to be able to correct any mistakes. For those of you that are drawing from scratch uh, with me, it's more critical, obviously, that you have something you can that you can clean up, right? That you can erase, remove, etc. If you're using the stencils, well, perfect. Stencils make it a lot. Not a little easier, quite a bit easier. So, but we'll talk about this here in just a moment. <clears throat> but our next step is going to be that we draw our horses. Okay, so let's take a look at our original painting. I'm going to bring it. Point it towards me a little bit so I have a better angle on it. Okay, let me bring this guy over just a, just a little bit. Okay, so where the two, where the heads of the two horses meet, right about in here is about the middle of my canvas across like this. Okay, this is about the middle. Okay, and so what I'm going to do just really lightly Really, really light, lightly. You don't have to do this on yours, but I do recommend it. Find, eyeball it. You don't have to measure anything. You can also use your fingers to kind of span your, your canvas and see where that, about where the middle is. I'm just going to draw a nice light pencil line just so I know about where the center of those heads are going to meet. Now, this is really light right now. Don't worry about it too much that you can't see it. It's purposefully light. And just know that there's a line here. I can see it on my on my screen here. I'm going to go and expand my um, screen a little bit so I have a better view of what you guys so I can see what you guys see. So the other thing I'm going to do is then I'm going to draw a line across the middle of my canvas vertically. So about right here, about. Let me get a better angle on this. Yeah, okay, right here. All right, again, I'm eyeballing. Nothing too specific, nothing too crazy. This part right here would be approximately right about right here between the two horses. Okay, right about right there. This part right here. And it doesn't really matter. It can go up a little bit higher. It can go down a little lower. It's not, this part of it is not super crucial. But what we're going to do is we're going to start drawing the big horse on the, on the right side. See, slightly larger than the one on the left, at least. That's the way it is on my original painting. Um, and I'm going to keep it that way on this new piece. <clears throat> so let's start, let's start right about in here. We're gonna start with this part of the nose. That is about maybe five inches from the bottom of my canvas. Okay, about. Okay, and of course it's slightly over to the right. So I'm gonna start with a nice little curved line here. And that is this. The main thing you want to be careful of is that you don't go down too low so that you leave enough room for your, for your sunset. Okay, so again, this line right here, 
and you notice it's slightly right of the center line, is this right here. Because we're doing this in something that we can erase, we can make adjustments. Where I'm going to go from here is up, okay? But how tall is our horse? On my canvas, it's maybe about six inches high. So about right here. So from right here, we're going to go up. My, my chalk lines are going to be a little light at the beginning. And then as I start to refine my lines, I'm going to darken them up a little bit more. Okay. And this kind of can come again, maybe about six inches. I'm not really worried about the little curlies here, the little hair coming over the top. Okay. okay I'm going to come out a little bit this way. That is this part right in here. A little curve back is that little guy right there. Then without messing with that ear, we're gonna we're gonna work our way back. Nice curve. If you've got the stencil, all you're doing right now is tracing yours. Okay, again, I, I'm not worried about that ear. We'll add the ear in a little bit. Right now we're just worried about the general shape. Here we got the arch of that neck comes down to the this little area up in here, drops down into the, where the nose would be, right? And then curves back under, under that mouth. So take a moment on that. Okay. You can do pastels if you'd like. Amanda, you can do pastels. Carrie, Dan, um, if you, any of this goes for anyone, folks, if you start to fall behind, don't stress about it too much. Do your best to keep up. Then you're, you're just simply, you'll just simply continue with the recorded version of this. So let's say at some point you go, oh my gosh, I'm too far behind. Hopefully you're able to stay up, right? Hopefully you're all able to keep up because that makes for a, a much a more enjoyable session if we're all kind of hanging out, playing, uh, painting together. But if you fall too far behind, the recorded session of this will be available immediately afterwards. So paint for as long as you can. And then if you can't finish with the live session, as soon as it's over, you'll find it under the live tab here on Painting with Jesse. The top of the page, if there's a live tab. You click on that. You see all the previously recorded sessions. If you're on YouTube, you just look at all the videos, you know, a little video tab up on top, and you'll see it there. Okay, But do your best to keep up. Um, but don't stress too much. Okay, don't stress too much about the process. All right, here we go. Let's continue. So I've got to make sure that I've got the same view you guys have so I know what's working and what isn't. Let me expand my screen to see what you guys are seeing. Okay, hopefully you guys are also on a big enough screen. If you guys are trying to do this from a phone or um, a smaller tablet, it's going to be tricky. It can be a little tricky. Okay, you want to do this on a, on a bigger screen. Makes it easier for you to see everything that I've got going on over here. But all right. Right over here, this little curved line is this right in here, okay? From there, I'm just gonna do another little curved line that goes up, a little curve, a little smile. Bring that up, okay? Goes up like a, almost like a J. And then we work our way back a little bit. Okay, goes back up. Here's the big jaw muscle. Okay, this guy right there. Nice and easy, folks. Now you notice, again, if you do the little, the little cross in the section, in the middle section of your canvas, depending on what proportion canvas you've got, this just went right above the middle of the canvas. So here's the middle. That line just came right above that. From there, we're going to work our way back, curve it down under. Now, for reference, this line here is a little further where this falls off the edge over there, it's a little further down than this is. So maybe over here somewhere. And again, this doesn't have to be exact. There can be some slight variation. Don't stress too much. You're not, you're not necessarily trying to recreate exactly what I've got over here. Okay? Do your best. Enjoy the process. Don't get too stressed out about it. I know especially if you're doing it freehand, things can get a little tricky. But this is all practice. The more you do it, the more you do it, the better you're going to get. Okay? So just have fun. Let's have some fun today. 
Okay. You guys got about 30 seconds on this. Here's the beauty of chalk. For those of you that aren't familiar with, with using chalk to draw. I've got a paper towel right here. It's got a little bit of water on it. If I wanted to erase something like this, this line over here, I just come over, comes right off. Now this is just basic chalk. You can pick up anywhere. Okay. As long as I didn't have too much water on my towel, I can come right over and redraw my line, redo my line. Okay. You don't, whenever you erase, you don't want to use too much water for two reasons. One, if the, the under painting is, is still a little bit uh, wet, you might remove some of it. But also because if you're going to draw over it again, you're going to have to wait till it dries if it's still wet. Okay, so just a little slightly damp cloth is all you really need. But all right, here we go. I'm going to take a little step back. I'm going to look at my drawing here, see if there's anywhere that I need to make any adjustments. So far, so good. I'm going to go ahead and add my ear. Okay, my ear up here at the top is, so here's my little corner. That is that part of the painting. Comes back maybe about an inch, an inch and a quarter right in there. I'm just going to do a nice little triangle with curved, curved lines, slightly curved lines. Okay. There's my ear. I can come in here and I can do this. There we go. That's gone. And that's a little bit bigger than the original. I'm going to go ahead and just touch it up a little. Again, what can we do? We can just come in here, easily erase, and we do it again. A little bit smaller. I like that better. Once you've got your ear in place, don't worry about this too much. I'm going to move ahead here, but this isn't that crazy. I'm just going to take my edge. And I'm going to give it these little humps as it heads on back, right? The horse's mane. If I want, I can come in here and clean these lines up. Not necessary. I can paint right over them. But just so that it's easier for you that are following, you, following along, for you to be able to see them, I went ahead and erased them. Again, everyone do your best. Don't stress. Everyone's, gonna, everyone's painting is going to look a little different. Everyone's going to have a slightly different version of this. Uh, I can't wait to see all your pictures when you guys send those over to me. I'd like to share those so everyone kind of gets a chance to see what everybody else does. So please, when you're all done at the end of the session, please make sure you message me your painting. Take a picture of yourself, maybe holding it, or a picture of your group. Or if you're kind of shy and you just want to send me a picture of your painting, Send that over to me here on Messenger on Painting with Jesse. If you're on YouTube, you can email it to me at paintingwithjesse at gmail.com. But all right, last thing I'm going to do to our horse here is I'm going to give it a little bit of a curly mane coming over the top, a little frock in the front, just a little bit. Of course, this is all going to be covered in paint later when we do it, so... Just give it a little bit what you think looks good on your horse, and we're good. One minute, let me look at your comments before we go on to the next horse. Sandra Barr says, I will be doing this on the weekend. Absolutely, Sandra, no worries. Loretta Erdman, absolutely. Once again, folks, you will be able to watch this later, okay? Again, whether you're painting right now or you're not painting right now, uh, you'll be able to watch this at a later time. As soon as this is over, you can go over to the live tab here on Painting with Jesse and you'll find, a, find the recorded uh, version there. Or if you're on YouTube, you'll go over to my YouTube page and same thing. So you can paint along with it tonight, tomorrow, on the weekend, whatever you'd like to do with that. And if you're painting right now, but you fall behind, like I said, don't stress about it too much. I want you guys um, to be able to have fun with this, enjoy the process, and that sort of thing. Okay? So, all right. Here we go. You got it, Loretta. My pleasure. What's happening, Ren Randy Hinky Bassett? 
from Michigan. What's going on out in Michigan? Hope you guys are all doing fantastic wherever you are. All right. Miranda Martin says, I cast to my TV. My eyes are not as young as they used to be. Tell me about it, Miranda. Sometimes when I'm trying to read your comments on my laptop, I'm like, what? What does that say? Is that an I or is that an L? What is that? <laughs> so I hear you. Let's see. There's a question up here from Karen Cushing McPherson says, if we're using heavyweight watercolor paper, will wiping chalk lines away with water mess up the paper? Using pencil and erasing, but I like the chalk idea. Karen, so it depends on the weight of the paper and how much, how much water it soaks up. If it soaks water and it's too delicate, if you rub it, you might take some of that surface paper off. So if anything, maybe take a scratch piece and practice on that first. But the chalk idea is fantastic. Once I started drawing mine with chalk, it, it, it just makes it a lot easier. A lot, a lot easier to work with, okay? Pencil. As an alternative, I use pencil, right? When I don't have chalk, I'll use pencil. Or if I don't have a chalk color that contrasts against my background and pencil is, a be is better for that, I'll use pencil. But yeah, having to erase pencil can be a little tricky. All right, here we go. Next horse. Our horse over to the left. Once you've got the first horse, the other horse becomes a lot easier to do because the first horse, you'll be using the first horse to gauge your proportions of the second horse. Okay, again, so once you've got one horse down, the other horse becomes a little bit easier to do. So what we're going to do is we're going to start kind of similarly to what we did with the first horse. We're going to start with this part right in here, front part of the mouth, the nostril area. And of course, they're almost touching. Okay, and again, and this one, this edge on this horse is a little more curved than this one, than the edge on the first one. Okay, so this edge over here has a, a slightly less curve. That, Slight less curvature than this one. So just a couple of things to keep in mind, right? And the angle's a little bit different, but we're going to start right here. And again, don't stress too much. If your placement isn't perfect or exactly like mine, don't worry about it too much. So what we're going to start with is right here. This little corner area right in here on the top of the nostril. And that part comes in right about here. Now, I might have a little more separation on my two horses here than I do on the original, or I might have less. That's not super important. I'll leave that up to you to decide how close you want your horses to be. Okay. So right there. Oh, let me sit down for this. Allows me to get a little closer to my image, and then let me get back to the white screen so I can see what you guys see. Okay. Let me take that off here. So again, what I'm going to do is just put in that little corner section. And that's that right there. Then we're going to come inwards and down at a, at a slight angle. Okay. Then we're going to curve up. This is this in here. And I can already tell I didn't make it long enough, so let me make a little adjustment. There we go, that's a little bit better. Now the bottom lip comes in. Okay. Once you've drawn a little bit, especially if you've got the chalk, you can make little adjustments. Now we're gonna draw the bottom part here. This line down here comes back about let's say about three, three and a half, maybe four inches. We're still way under that line across the middle of our canvas. This line right here, we're still quite a bit below that, okay? I'm going to stop right there for now. I'm gonna go ahead and take this part right here, I'm gonna come up, and it's gonna curve up a little. Okay, just a little bit. I'll give you guys about a minute on that. Now, one thing you want to watch out for is make sure you leave a little space in between so that this hair is a little forelock. They don't, I mean, they could even touch, right? It won't be that big of a deal if they, if they touch a little bit, but just be careful you're leaving enough space in there to be able to put some of that in there. 30 seconds. If you're up close, 
painting from a really close distance, make sure you, look, you take a little step back, look at your painting from a distance so you can better assess your proportions, your angles, and that sort of thing. Okay, let's continue. So this is going to come up. Okay, and then it's gonna, it's gonna turn back a little bit. Don't wanna go too far back. So again, this one went up a little bit, kind of started coming close to our first horse and then it curves back just a little bit. Nothing too crazy, nothing fancy there. Again, we're not worried about that ear for now. We're gonna go ahead and work our way back, okay? Curve back over. And then that's going to come out to the edge. We break this down a little bit at a time. Okay, our little jaw muscle right, here, right in here. Maybe not as pronounced as on, that, as on that horse. Curves back under. Now we've crossed the middle section, that line across the middle, we've crossed just a little. Okay, curves back towards the edge. Okay. And then starts into that leg muscle, the very top. Not sure what that part of the horse is referred to, but it's kind of like right, not quite, not quite where the leg starts, right? But above that. <clears throat> I guess that's, I guess that would be the chest maybe. Yeah, you guys got about a minute. Problem is that once the uh, drawing part of it is done, things get a little easier. While you guys are working on that, give me one second. March 17th, St. Patrick's Day. The next, so the next two events, the only two events that are currently scheduled, that are currently on the schedule, and that'll change. I'll be adding some more here over the next few days. But on the 17th, we got this cool little leprechaun that I'm going to be teaching you how to draw and how to paint from scratch. Okay? That's on the 17th. Don't remember the time, but if you guys look at the event tab, here on Painting with Jesse, you're gonna find the information on all of that. On the 19th, two days later, for those of you that are Mandalorian and Grogu fans, I'm gonna be teaching you how to draw that and paint for, completely from scratch. This is on the 19th, March 19th, I believe that's a Friday, okay? Both of these are listed under the event tab on the main Painting with Jesse page. If you're interested, you guys, will, you guys should go check those out. Go over to the discussion tab because both of those have stencils that I've provided under there and you guys can use those instead of drawing freehand. Anyway, all the details are there on the event page. Okay, let's take a look at our horse over here. What's missing? We need an ear. And this ear starts about right here. Okay, now if you notice, right, this ear is under this ear. This ear is under the other horse's ear. Again, little triangle with curved, curved sides, slightly curved. I'm gonna go ahead and remove this. Whoop, too much chalk on my paper towel. Let me 
Get a little water in there. Okay, there's that. Once you've got your ear in place, go ahead and add in a little bit of that four lock main coming over the front. Comes down. Remember, this is all in silhouette. Then some over the top. Goes across the back. Because it's in silhouette, the only thing that really matters are the edges. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and erase the lines that we put in the center because we don't need those anymore. Take a little step back when you have a moment. Assess your drawing. Make little refinements wherever you feel you need them. And we are good. All right. You guys got about a minute and a half, so take a look at your handiwork. Make sure you're happy with everything. But all right. So Anita is asking if there's a stencil. Absolutely, there's a stencil under the, under the discussion tab, a, a stencil for today's event. You're looking for the stencil, go over to the discussion tab on the event page and you'll find the stencil in there. You can download it directly from there. If you, if you have a hard time downloading, email me and I'll get you the PDF for that. Uh, you'll want to email me at paintingwithjesse at gmail.com. I'll send you the PDF for that. Uh, of course, that will be uh, later, right? Uh, I wouldn't be able to do that right now for obvious reasons. But yeah, if you can't download it right from that, event tab, then go over and email me and I'll get that over to you. All right? All right. What else do we got, folks? Okay. So once you've got your horses nice and um, outlined, what you're going to do is you're, you're actually going to take and put some paint on. Okay? So what I'm going to do is I have my... my filbert the brush with the rounded head right here right at the top okay i'm going to take now you can use a smaller brush you don't have to use a filbert you can use a flat brush you can also even i wouldn't recommend using um, a small round brush one of the little skinny tiny things because it'll take forever but i'm going to grab some black scoop up some black good gob of it now i'm going to grab another plate here i'm going to bring some of this black over here Okay, now I'm going to dip my brush. I'm dipping my brush into my water cup. Okay, and I'm bringing some water over. Okay, so there's water. So I'm going to mix the two together. So basically what I'm doing is I'm mixing some black paint and some water together. The water is going to help me create the outline for my horse. It also makes it easier for that paint to spread across on my canvas. So nice and easy. Okay. Now, obviously, I'm going to need a lot more paint than that to fill the inside of the horses in. But right now, I'm only worried about my edges. Now, I'm not going to do anything with the curly part of my horse. I'm, doing, I'm going to follow the outline that I made originally. I'm not worried about uh, anything but the outline of the main part of the horse right now. Going right over my chalk lines. Okay, I want to cover those up. Now again, you could use a flat brush for this. 
the filbert isn't as important here. The reason I'm using the filbert is I like that it gets nice and skinny like this. The, the tip of it gets nice and skinny when I press it against my plate. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to continue on over the top. Kind of like this. Okay. Now, before I do anything with the main over here, I'm going to go ahead and fill it in. Before I do that, I'm not. I'm not going to use. I'm not going to use my filbert for that. I'm going to use this. But what you can do with the filbert is this. When you're around the curved parts of it, you could use the filbert. Makes it easier to paint around curved edges. Okay, so all this in here, the filbert, because the edge of the filbert's rounded, it's easier to stay within your lines. In here. There we go. Once we've done this, or where, the where the outline is in, now I can switch brushes. I'll take my number one, my big one, load up on paint, and this big brush helps me cover this area much more quickly. So this first layer of paint is going to be a little transparent, a little bit uneven, as it always is with acrylic paint. Or maybe I won't say always, but 90% of the time, 99% of the time, your first layer of acrylic paint is exactly that. First layer tends to be uneven, a little transparent here and there. You're not going to get everything fully covered on this first layer. We're going to come back and do another layer after this dries. For now, just put your layer down, get inside your lines, right? Cover everything up, try and minimize. If you can see any of that background color coming through, try to minimize it as much as you can. The other thing I would recommend doing is this. Kind of following the curvature, the shape, of the horse's head a little bit, like right here in the face, right here on that jaw muscle, on the jaw, just curve it a little bit perhaps, and then here on the long part of the face, use your brush strokes to create nice long uh, uh, lines, really subtle. And here in the neck, maybe we kind of curve it a little. We're giving the horse a little tiny bit of shape, even though this is all one flat color. Depending on the type of paint you're using, Brush strokes can be a little bit visible. Even if your brain isn't necessarily going, oh yeah. The brush strokes can trick your vision a little bit and gives your horse a little bit more dimension. Not super important in this case, but it can help. So put your layer of paint down. And in about two minutes, we're going to go ahead and move over to this one and do the same thing. We're gonna leave the horses alone. Once we've put a layer of paint down on the second horse, we're gonna leave them alone. We're gonna start working on some of the background stuff, the bottom area, the trees. Um, perhaps, yeah, I think we might, we can throw in the sun before we do, in the, do the trees. 
the order doesn't really matter too much down there. But anyway, we'll start working on the background. Once all this is dried, we'll come back in and do a second layer over the top of this. And then everything gets nice and even, darker, etc. All right. Brina Rice Weldrick says, can we paint a Marvel theme painting sometime in the future? I would love to do that. That would be a lot of fun. Um, yeah, I think we have some Marvel paintings in our near future. That would be fantastic. A lot of fun to do. Sue Kripe says, mine look like seahorses. Hey, that's not too bad, see, uh, Sue. Seahorses. Come on, you know, they, they could look like seahorses, most definitely. And that would look, that'd be okay. Gloria, you got it. My pleasure. My pleasure, my pleasure. But anyway, Anita, yes, um, if you need to use a, or anybody that needs to use a stencil, if you don't have one today, simply go over to the discussion tab on the event page for today's painting, and you'll find the stencil there under the discussion board. If you have a hard time downloading it from there, simply email me at paintingwithjesse at gmail.com, and I will get that over to you. Now, I don't know why it is some, it seems that, I mean, this is a common occurrence, so I've got to imagine it's something to do with the setup on the event page, but oftentimes people will send me messages, hey, I can't find the, I can't find the stencil. And when I go look, it's right there. It's really, really obvious where it is. But I think perhaps different settings on people's, whether they're looking on a phone or a computer, or you know, like a desktop, laptop, maybe there are a little, there's some differences that make it a little harder to, to see those. But, but yeah, definitely, I can, I can totally see that. That happened. But all right, here we go. Next horse. Let's go over to the next horse. Back to my filbert. And again, just want to emphasize, if you don't have a filbert, don't worry about it too much. The reason why I'm using this filbert is because of the rounded, rounded edge. It's rounded like this. It makes it easier to work, especially when I do this. It's, uh, work, work in curved edges. But all right. More black paint over to my mix plate. Okay, like this. Gonna take a little water. Don't need a lot of water, just a little bit. Dip your brush into your water cup and then introduce some water into your mixture. And here we go. What I'll do first is I press that brush right into that plate, making that edge nice and skinny. Before I do any actual painting on the inside of the horse, I'm just gonna create a, a nice outline. And I'll do my best to try to cover up my chalk lines as much as I can. If I have a little bit of chalk lines on the peeking through on the edges, I'm not too worried about that because that is easy to clean once the uh, painting is dry. But I do try to cover them. It saves me some time at the end. If any of you are first timers to the page, we have done about 80 sessions now since last March. And all of those videos have been saved to the main Painting with Jesse page under the live tab here on Facebook. A lot of them are on YouTube also, but um, they're all here on Facebook. If any of you are interested in going to check out the library, Go over to the live tab and you'll find a whole bunch of really cool videos that we've done over the past almost year. Those are all just sitting there hanging out. And then I know I mentioned this at the very beginning, but 
In about a week or so, a week and a half, I'm going to do the first technique, strictly technique tutorial on here. We're going to talk about brush use, what each brush does. We're going to talk about the fan brush, the bright brush, the flat brush, the round brush. We'll throw in a mop, the mop brush, brush that's uh, not very commonly used here with me. Actually, use the flan brush, not yet. But we're going to talk anyway. We're going to talk about brush technique, what brushes to use and when. The filbert, which is what I'm using right now. They all specialize in something different. They can be, a lot of them are inter interchangeable. You can do a lot of the same things with the same brush, right? A flat brush and a, a bright brush are almost identical. And a lot of the, um, a lot of the same things can be done with different brushes, but there are some things that they each specialize in. So we're gonna talk about that. I'll go through how to use each one of those, show you guys some techniques with them. Some of them are good for making clouds. Some of them are good for making skinny lines. For example, the, uh, the angular brush. That one is really nice when you have a nice stiff bristle brush. They're really good for making nice long lines, whether straight or curved. But anyhow, keep your eyes peeled for that. Shading is another thing that we're going to talk about in the future, how to shade. Proper shading techniques. Okay, right here where the lip is, where the bottom lip is, it's not too defined like it is on the original. I'm going to take my number three round. Okay, just to fix that and take a little bit of black, just dipping it right into my paint. I spin my brush to make that point nice and curved. Then I'm going to come in here and just going to give my horse a bit more of a refined bottom lip. And I go slowly when I do this because I don't. I don't want to make the mistake of going too big too fast. I'm also going to come up here and just touch up that area there. Don't forget, take a little step back. Look at your masterpiece from a distance. Make sure everything looks good. Make sure you're not missing anything. Again, we're not, not, I'm not touching any of this on the inside just yet. We're going to do that in just a bit. But all right, take a moment or two, maybe a minute to catch up. Let's take a look at those comments, see what we got. Lori says, I'm a first timer. Welcome, Lori. Thank you for being here. Hopefully you're having a good time. We do lots of fun events here, so make sure you come on back. Belinda says, just found this video. Am I able to look at it afterwards? You sure can. Um, actually, if you were ready to paint right now, you could go right over to YouTube on the YouTube page and start from the beginning. Okay, otherwise, you can find the recorded version uh, here on Facebook and on YouTube immediately after this live session is over. In about an hour and a half or so, uh, you'll be able to go back and watch the recorded session, okay? So absolutely, absolutely. But all right, folks. For those of you that are interested in helping support the page, I've put up my uh, virtual tip jar. They're on the bottom of the screen. I have a Venmo, PayPal, and a Zelle. This information is also listed at the top under the description of this video. Again, for those of you that, are, uh, that would like to help out, help support the channel, uh, be greatly appreciated. That information is right there at the bottom. I'll leave it, leave it up there for just a little bit. Okay. Let's see where we are here. I'm going to get in there and let me exit from my big screen here. Actually, get into the large screen so I can see what you guys got. All right. So now, number three. Getting back to my number three round brush. Yeah, I dipped it into some paint with some water. 
Now I'm going to go, go ahead and paint over my main. Okay, so I can start, I can start anywhere. I can start from the bottom and work my way up. I can work from, most of this is already pretty dry, so I can put my hand on it. If it's not dry enough, I can take my hand here because I'm working on an easel. My non-painting hand, I can put it right here on the easel, and then I'll take my painting hand and place it right over the wrist of my um, non-painting hand. And what I'm going to do is right here at the top, I'm just gonna give a little bit of a curve. If I don't paint over all of that chalk, I'll erase some of it. Okay, so just because I've got chalk there doesn't mean I have to paint over it. I can choose where to paint and where not to paint, and then I can erase whatever I don't want. So I'm just gonna come in here like this. Whatever makes sense. Okay, something like that. I like that. You guys see all this extra down here, this extra chalk? Once all this is dry, I can remove that. Okay, I'm not worried about covering up every bit of chalk that's on that, on that canvas. Okay, now I'm going to come over to the other side and do the same thing. Oh, also, I didn't mention this, of course, but I was talking about it, I think, yesterday on my page. I'll be posting up links to some of my uh, favorite brush kits, things like that. So for those of you who would like to get some nice brush kits, I'll put up some like uh, different levels of, of brushes, beginner but good quality, right? Your, your brushes make all the difference in the world. If you don't have good brushes, just like with anything, if you're a mechanic, if you're a doctor, if you're whatever you might be. If you work with metal, pottery, if you don't have the right tools, you will struggle a bit. And then, of course, the better your tools are, the better you'll get at what you're doing. But there are um, some really expensive brushes, especially as a beginner. You don't, you, you know, you want to stay away from those. Well, not that you don't, that you want to. If you can afford them. Perfect, but you don't have to jump and get these really expensive brushes. Good quality brushes. There are a lot of good quality brushes you can buy on the cheaper side and they'll last you a long time. But the right set of brushes, even as a beginner, will get you a long way. It'll eliminate a lot of frustration. So anyway, I'll be posting up some links about that stuff later, maybe tomorrow, for those of you that are interested in checking some of that stuff out. But anyways, you can see again, a little close up. I just, all these little chalk lines and stuff, those will be eliminated later. And even on the edges over here, where some of that's peeking around the sides, that's, that comes off easily. Once this is dry, just take a slightly damp paper towel, wipe right over the top of that, and those chalk marks disappear. All right. You guys got about a minute on that. I'm gonna step away from the laptop for a moment. Or from my setup here for a moment. Oh, if you guys want, you can wrap your horses around the edges. Just like I pa painted the edges of my canvas earlier, and the colors of the background, you can take your horses and wrap them around the edges if you'd like. That'd be, that'd be a cool aesthetic. That'd be a cool little aesthetic. Okay?
Now, for those of you that may have missed this a few days ago, we did this awesome little no, uh, little um, St. Patrick's gnomes. This video is still available if you guys want to go check that out. Okay. That was, uh, I don't know, about three, four days or so ago. Saturday, I believe it was. And then before that, a few days before that, for those of you that are Dr. Seuss fans, we did this guy right here, the cat in the hat. Taught you both of those completely from scratch. If you guys are interested in going to check those out, go over to that live tab on the main painting with Jesse Page, and you guys can find those there. But all right, enough about the horses for now. Um, get that out of there. Go back to your comments. <clears throat> Robin, so good question. Good, uh, good question from Robin. She says, "Question about gesso on paper. How long should we wait before painting on it?" So the main thing you want to be worried about is how dry it is. You want to make sure that it's dry. If it's dry to the touch, you know, make sure that it's nice and dry uh, before you start painting on it. Uh, typically, with gesso, you know, you just want to make sure that it's dry, whether it's on canvas, paper, etc., before you actually start to paint over it. Because it because the paper is porous a little bit, um, it will dry from both sides. A little, depending on the type. Well, let me let me back up. Depends on the type of paper that you're using, uh, but you just want to make sure that it's dry to the touch before you actually paint on it. Okay, if it's even a little bit wet, you're gonna you're gonna start smearing the paint. So just make sure that it's fully dried. All right, here we go. Let me take a look. What we're going to do next is we're going to go ahead and add in this black surface here on the bottom, the ground. Okay. Before we actually do the moon, the sun, we're going to go ahead and add that first. I'm going to take, I'm going to take my little round brush, my number three, and I'm going to outline the horizon line for that. So it's going to take some black here. Okay. I'm going to bring that over to my mix plate. I'm going to add a little bit of water to it, just a little bit. Get my brush in there one time in my water cup. Okay, then what I'm going to do, and you could do this. It doesn't have to be a round brush that you do this with. You can use, you, actually, you know what? Let me switch it up. I'm going to go ahead and use my filbert. But you could use your brown round brush for this or a flat brush. Doesn't really matter. All we're going to do is we're going to create the edge. Okay, the edge. The top edge of our, our horizon line, and everybody's area is going to look a little bit different. What you want to be careful of is how high you go here in the center, so that when we put that sun in place, you have enough. You don't cover up your sun. I mean, it just really depends on how much sun you want to be peeking up over the horizon there. But what I'm going to do is this: I'm just going to mark off the edge here. Then I'm just going to bring that down. I'm going to work my way down a little bit. Kind of drops down a little. Okay, can you see that bottom edge on my painting? You sure can. Okay, good. Now, I, what I did is I raised my canvas and I put it right over the lip of my easel. I'm going to bring this over. There's this little depression in here where the sun's going to sit. I bring this back up, come out to the side. And then I just raise this back up. How high, how low, that's kind of really up to you. On my painting, it's maybe about an inch, inch and a half on either side. Once I've got the um, horizon outlined. I'm just going to go ahead and fill it in. And I'm still using my filbert. You can add little jagged edges, jagged parts to your edge. Just a little. And just like with the horses, this is likely going to take a couple of layers of paint so don't stress too much about how perfect and even in color everything is down here put your paint down I'm going to do your in this case, I am going to wrap this around my edge. 
again, just a choice. Now, here, eventually, I'm going to have paint all the way across the bottom edge. But I'm not doing that now. I'm going to do this at the very, very end when I'm all done. I'll flip the canvas over and paint that bottom edge. For now, I'm just going to fill all this in here. Okay. While you guys are working on that, I am going to come over and wrap my horses around. Also, what the heck? Why not? So again, the edges of my horses are wrapping around the side. I'll show you what that looks like here in a sec. So just like this. Okay, took my horse, matched it around the edge here. And I'll do the same thing on the other side. And you can do this with your flat, flat brush or your, your filbert. Doesn't really matter. Any one of your flat brushes. All right. So, you guys got about 30 seconds, maybe a minute, and we're going to start adding some trees. Trees can be really tricky for some people, okay? But I'll try to give you as much of a close-up as I possibly can, but we're going to get into those trees in just a moment. I know it's scary for some of you. You guys are going, what? Trees? No, Jesse. Well, I'm not ready. I'm not ready for the trees yet. We're moving too fast into those trees. You guys are going to be all right. <laughs> Rosemary, yeah, the silhouette part. The biggest, the biggest error you can make on a silhouette is when you're painting your edges. Okay, the edges are very important to make that object look look like whatever it is that you're trying to create, right? If you're trying to make a horse, um, because it's just in silhouette, the edge is really important. So it it's very easy to start to distort the image when you start going beyond your edges, right? As you're filling in the inside of what you've just drew, as you're painting around those edges, if you start to make little mistakes and maybe the, uh, the image starts to grow, it can slightly get disproportionate. And that's where you might start to have some issues. But yeah, a little tricky. It can be a little tricky to paint silhouettes. All right. Here we go. Let's uh, let's talk about the trees. Now, I'm going to show you a couple of ways to do this. If you have a flat brush or a a filbert, anything that you can flatten out to create a nice thin edge with, like this, you can use this. Now, here's what I want you guys to do: be careful with how much space you leave in here for your sun. Right, depends how big you want it. You're gonna put your trees around it. So uh, just kind of gauge, maybe with your pencil or with your chalk, if you have some, where did my other chalk, there's my chalk. Maybe mark how big you want your sun to be. So, so my sun will be, the edge will be there. Other edge will be over here. Just my edges for now. Or you could even just draw it in if you'd like. Just your, all we really care about right now is the outline. The shit, where's your sun going to live? The edges, I should say. So all we really care about right now. Now we can start adding some trees. But what I'm going to do, again, I'm going to show you with a couple of brushes here what to do. Filbert or a flat. You can press it into the paint, make your edge nice and thin. I'm going to start right over here. All I'm going to do is make a skinny line about down where the middle of my tree is going to be. Okay, again, I used this with, did that with the filbert. That's where that skinny part of my brush, uh, uh, that was with the skinny part of my brush and that's the center of my tree. But let's just imagine, 
Maybe that's a tree trunk. And I'm going to show this a couple of times. Now, I know you guys are kind of far away. So I'm going to try to zoom in just a little bit. Or I might need to raise my canvas a little. But I'm going to demonstrate it first without holding the canvas up in the air. I'm going to do this <clears throat> with a canvas here, and then I'll show you. I'll, I'll do this with the canvas closer to the camera. I'm taking my round brush. What I'm going to do now, and again, like I said, I'm going to demonstrate it here with another tree. I'm going to give you guys a closer view. Let's see here. Let me... Let me maximize my screen size so I can see what you guys are all seeing. Okay, so all I'm going to do here, starting at the top, I'm just going to start bringing, I'm using the very point of my bristles, start coming down on each side of my little line that I just created, just coming down in either direction, creating. My branches. And again, folks, I'm going to give you guys a close up in a moment. Don't stress too much. If you guys are on a big screen TV, you can probably see what I'm doing pretty well. If you're not, don't worry. I'm going to give you guys a shot to see this up and close in a moment. Okay. So all I did, okay, again, using my little round brush here, just went down on each side of my line, coming down. But let me demonstrate it again. Let's see if I can do this. See if I can do this like this. So right here's another tree. Now I'm going to use my round brush to make the center. Okay, doesn't have to be perfectly straight, but I'll start near the top. Now I'm not pushing down on the brush really hard against the surface. I'm actually using one of the little corners of the very tip of the bristles, or, or the very tip, the, the furthest tip out, where the some little bristles kind of stick out. I'm just going to come in here on each side. I just start working my way down. Now watch what I'm doing with my hand. Kind of, there's a little bit of a randomness at play here. That was a little tricky to do holding it up, pulling the canvas up. But you, you might want to practice on a piece of paper first. Okay. You can also do this with a small flat brush. For those of you that have a small flat brush, I'll demonstrate using a small flat brush in a moment. Okay, give me one second. Once you've done this a couple of times, you're going to start getting the hang of it. Once you've gone down on both sides like this, like I just did, you can kind of just come in here and touch up. Fix a little bit here and there. There's a little bit of a randomness to this. Okay. Now, for those of you, actually, I'm going to do that again. I actually want to do that again with this, my round number three. You got a round zero or round four, doesn't really matter too much. We're going to do this again. Okay, so center of the tree. And they can all vary a little bit in size, right? They don't all have to be. Um, on my original, I did the, the edges had the bigger trees and they slowly got smaller as they got in towards the center. Doesn't, that doesn't really matter too much. But here we go. I'm touching this just with the tip of my brush. And again, there is a randomness to this. It's not super controlled. Okay. Now, from a distance, 
they start to look like pine trees, okay? Now let me grab a small flat brush. Give me a second. It's not one of the brushes that I used or that I listed, but in case some of you happen to have a small flat brush, um, this would help, okay? This, this is how you would do it with a flat brush. Give me one second. So here I've got a flat number two, pretty small little flat brush. So real similar process, not much changes. Scoop up my paint. Okay, I go, this time I'm gonna do it on the other side, over here. Okay, this is the middle of my middle of my tree. This little flat brush has a, has a little tiny bristle that's sticking out. Let me see if I can get it out of there. Otherwise, it's going to make a mess of my painting. Give me one second, guys. All right, here we go. So I'm gonna use a little, a brush that's a little bit bigger than the one I was just using. This is a flat number six. Okay, a little bit bigger, but it'll still work out. Here we go. So in this case, what I can do is I can use the corner of the bristles. Okay, this part right in there. So let me see if I can do this folding the canvas up, but using the little corner, I'm just going to come down on either side. You notice kind of a similar action as what I did with the round brush. I'm just kind of tapping as I go down on either side. Now, because these trees are so far off in the distance, they don't require a lot of detail. Okay. So we can grab a little more paint. So from a distance, the trees don't have a lot of form, right? Again, it's kind of the silhouette, maybe. So again, I'm just using the little, little edges. But, so you only see the 
the outer edges of the tree and maybe some some light from the background peeking through a little bit here and there okay so that was with my flat brush if your paint is a little bit on the thicker side you could add a little bit of water to it and that will help the whole process whoops a too much paint there <clears throat> Okay, so again, from the entire process, from the entire process here with the, actually let me refine this tree a little bit now that I'm not holding it up in midair. Just cleaning it up a little bit. Okay. So, with my flat right in here okay here we go down each side just kind of going back and forth a tip again maybe some of you want to get this Get some practice in on a separate piece of paper. It's a lot easier doing this with the uh, canvas on the easel. But um, yeah, maybe some practice. I would recommend you getting a little practice in. Then maybe with my number, my little number zero, one I haven't used yet. I'll do the whole thing with this one. Okay, right down the middle. Okay. And here I go, from one side to the other. So one thing I would recommend is if you're a beginner with making trees like this, almost any time you're making trees, make them small first, make them skinnier. You can always make them a little bit thicker. Okay? Don't start making them really, really thick at the beginning because if you don't like them, that's harder to fix. So start skinny. And then you could add a little bit to them, a little girth to them, more leaves, more branches, etc. And this is, I know it's tricky. Practice. Practice, practice. And I'm just going to continue over to this side, make some smaller ones closer to my sun. And they don't have to be perfectly straight. They can be slightly at an angle. They're on a little bit of a hillside right they can be slightly actually angled in any direction i'll look at your questions in just a second or your comments but as many trees as you could fit in or as many trees as you want there we go Back to my zero. So again, I'm avoiding, avoiding putting tree, any trees on the inside where my, where my sun is. But you could have some, once you paint in your sun, you could put some trees on the inside of that too. That would look kind of cool. And again, folks, I know sometimes can, this can be a little frustrating. Or perhaps for some of you, you know, maybe you have a different way of making your trees. There are different ways. A fan brush would also work for these kind of trees. Like I said earlier, different um, brushes can do similar things. Once you've done your trees and some of them are dry, you can come back over them and just kind of random. So what I'm doing now, this, these are dry right here. I'll just kind of random come in here. I do a second layer over part of the tree, not all of it. Just kind of jumping around on the inside here. This gives the tree some dimension, especially once it's dried. Okay. 
That might be a little hard to see on camera, but I'm not covering up the entire tree in this layer right now. Just dropping some paint here and there to give the tree some dimension. But anyway, I'll, I'll do that same second layer on those two once they're a little, they're, they're dried. And on these two. So work on that for a little bit. Like I said, I know those are tough. Uh, let me look at any of your comments, questions, etc. Hopefully I didn't go through that too quickly. But I think most of you uh, got the idea. Sarah Ferguson says, this is so pretty. I'm really enjoying this. Awesome, Sarah. Happy to hear. Super happy to hear. Randy, yeah, trees are tricky. Some of the hardest things to do uh, in painting are trees. But once you have the hang of it, it's a lot, you know, obviously just like with everything else, you learn to ride, ride the bike, then you can start doing tricks on it and things like that. Jumping off of sidewalks and um, doing bunny hops and all that other good stuff. But yeah, once you get the hang of it, everything comes much easier afterwards. Same thing with trees. You just want to practice. Always make the mistake. If you're going to make a mistake, when you're making a tree or a branch, is go small and skinny first. You can always make it larger and add to it. But if you make it too large to begin with, that's harder to fix. Okay? But I'll be doing some tutorials on strictly trees, different types of trees, pine trees, maybe um, maybe like oak trees. You know, it just really depends. Uh, but they all have little techniques to them that, that um, you can use to make it easier, okay? But all right, one minute, one more minute while I sip on some of my coffee. Thinking of doing like a, a, a weekly, maybe 30 minute to an hour session, coffee and drawing with Jesse. I'm not sure, I've been thinking about something like that, like sometime in the morning. Coffee and coffee and sketching with Jesse, or tea and sketching with Jesse, something like that, um, where we just sit down and draw something for you know 30, 40 minutes, something kind of basic, but where we learn technique, shading with pencil, that sort of thing. Been playing around with that. We'll see. We'll see if uh, if I can implement that. I think that'd be a lot of fun and helpful for a lot of you. But okay, let's um, let's put in our sun. So you guys already saw, of course, I put mine in earlier. It's easy because I got my chalk. I can freehand this. If you have a hard time freehanding your, your sun in, you can use, for example, the lid. If I was to take this lid off of my coffee cup, I could use this and trace it, okay? Um, I could use the bottom of a paint bottle, this, okay, the bottom here. I could use that, same thing, trace it, something larger, it's up to you. You can freehand it or you can um, use something to trace it with. But once you've got your sun in place, you're gonna wanna go ahead and paint it in. Now, same thing, you wanna be careful with your edges because you can really quickly distort the outer shape. So I'm going to use my filbert for this. Same filbert brush I used earlier for the horses. I'm gonna clean it up a little in my cup because I got all this paint on it, right? All this black paint. I wanna remove that. Just clean, again, cleaning up my brush a little bit. I'm gonna take some of my black paint, bring it, not my black paint, we don't, that's what I don't wanna do. Whoa, there's a bunch of, ooh, my yellow and black happen to mix on my plate a little bit. But yeah, we don't want to use black paint for this. We want to use yellow. Now, if, you're, if your yellow paint that you're about to use on your sun is too uh, close in color to your background, you can add a little bit of white to the paint to lighten it up a little and make it, give it more of a contrast so it stands out against that color in the background. So... I'm scooping up some yellow. I'll show you guys here what I'm doing in a moment. I'm gonna scoop up some yellow and I bring it over to my plate. Okay, now I can take a little bit of white. A little bit of white right here. 
Don't need too much. I just want to bring up the yellow enough where it's easier to see. That's what I did over here on the original. It's easier to see this color against the background. Okay, and it's up to you how light you want this to be. We're going to layer this also more than likely. Now this is yellow against yellow, so maybe you don't need to um, layer this more than, uh, maybe you don't need more than one layer, but once you set down that first layer, you'll have a pretty good idea. Okay, so mine stands out, but not enough. It's all right. Just going to go through, put my layer down. Got to be careful it's down here on the um, black edge. Am I in shot or out of shot here? There we go. There we go. So I'm going to take a little bit more white paint to brighten up my yellow a little more. So I got my yellow right here. I'm going to take more white. There we go. That's better. So yeah, I'm going to use at least one more layer after this one dries. <laughs> Excuse me. The important thing is to keep your shape. Stay within your lines. Get your sun as big as you'd like it. But again, understand that you're going to need a second layer, or at least one more layer in my case. Might, might need two to make that sun really stand out. And I'll probably lighten it up even more. But the second layer for sure is going to make it stand out quite a bit more against that background. So work on that for a little bit. Yeah, we'll see, Lynn. I think uh, I think that'd be fun. That'd be a fun thing to do. Um, I might do that on Instagram for those of you that, those of you that have Instagram. I don't know that there's any way for me to stream both to Facebook and to Instagram, but Instagram, unless something's changed there. They only allow you to live stream for an hour, I think it is. So that would be perfect for Instagram. But anyway, I'd likely record that also and then make it available afterwards. But we could do a bunch of really fun sketches, you know, uh, refine our drawing. Anything that you do with, with painting, if you have a good drawing background, usually, unless you're doing something like abstract painting, most cases, a good drawing base will help you. Uh, especially if you're doing things like portraits, things like what we're doing today where you're drawing animals and scenery with trees and things like that. Having a good, <clears throat> excuse me, drawing base really helps out with that. So anyhow, I think that would be, that would be uh, a lot of fun. Okay, you guys got about a minute. And what we're going to do here in a bit we're going to go ahead and um, do a second layer over our horses. Make that all, make sure all that stands out nicely. We're going to come up here, put in our stars, do another layer of, um, do another coat of paint over the sun. And then we'll see where we go from there. You got it, Tina. My pleasure. Absolutely my pleasure. So again, folks, don't stress too much on that sun once you're painting over it. Uh, you don't sit there trying to make it, this layer super even and, you know, all solid. If it's a little transparent, you can see some of that background bleeding through your colors. That's normal. Don't sit there going, oh my gosh, I got to cover this up. It's going to take at least a couple of layers at least a couple layers on mine. It might even take three. Okay. So get your layer down in there. Again, the main thing you want to be careful of is that is the outline is the edge. Make sure it's nice and curved. 
stay within your lines, right? Especially if you if you decided you were going to trace yours on, uh, then you have a really nice smooth edge, right? And if you start to as you start to paint on the inside of that, it's really easy to uh, start to paint to start making your sun larger and larger or disproportionate. So make sure you first outline it in paint. Once you've drawn it, drawn it in, outline it in paint, do the outline first, and then fill the inside in. Okay? That's the that's the easiest way to keep from making uh, mistakes on when you're painting your sun. <clears throat> All right. So we're going to go ahead and do a second layer of paint on the horse. Okay. Now you do, when you join me for the birds, if you're going to be doing birds on yours, you want to make sure your sun is, is, is complete. What I mean by that, whether we're going to do two or three layers where you do, whether you're doing two or three layers on your sun to make it really stand out, we want it dry by the time we add the birds because the birds are going to be, some of those birds are going to be painted right over right over the sun, right? For those of you that are they're adding birds. So that's where, we're, where it's important. And that step, some steps you don't have to be completely done with by the time we're done today. But if you're planning on, add, on adding birds with me, you want to make sure your sun is done. So just something to keep in mind before we, <clears throat> before we get to those birds. So if you're a little behind on your sun, make sure you uh, do your best to catch up. All right. So here we go, number, filbert number eight. Just cleaning it up in my water cup, swirling it around in there. I got my paper towel that I'm going to use to uh, wipe off the extra paint off my brush. Okay, but here we go. I'm going to take some paint here. And again, I am going to go ahead and do my, my outline first. This just makes it way easier to stay within my lines. This part of it, I have to concentrate a bit on right now. I even hold, in this case, I'm holding the brush close to the bristles. Just going to come around, not worried about the main yet. Painting with the edge. Okay. Now, once I've done that, I go ahead and do my other horse. If you wrapped your horse around the edge of your canvas, it's not necessary to do a second or third layer, but that's up to you. Very few people are going to be painting, paying attention to the sides of your canvas like they are the front of the canvas. Okay. <clears throat> now I'm going to go ahead and using the using the filbert again, still using that filbert. I'm just going to carefully come in here, and again I could do this for those of you that are newer. Maybe you want to switch over to your round brush, the small one, so you so you're more careful with it, right? The smaller the area, the smaller the brush you want to use. Sometimes I find that I Try to cut corners. Oh, I'm using a big brush. I can I can get in that little corner. Then something happens and I, you know, I move my hand just a little tiny bit and I just went over my lines, past my lines, and that can be a little frustrating. So just be careful. Going back to my number one, the large brush and a scoop of a bunch of black. Now what you guys are gonna notice as you add your second layer of paint on your horses, they become nice and even. 
the color of the layer becomes nice and even. Okay, smoother. And you're filling in, if you had any gaps or areas with, where um, the paint was a little more transparent than others, you're going to hopefully cover it all up completely with this. For some of you, depending on your paint, you might need a third layer. Okay, so what I do first is I go ahead and add my layer of paint. Once I've added a full layer, I'll come in here with my brush and I'll start to smooth things out and use the brush to add a little bit of shape. So I've got my, my layer of paint in there. Now I'm going to come in here, start doing this, painting in the direction of the face, maybe up to here, then right here, curve it back. Again, very subtle for the most for the most part, this is going to be a little hard to detect. A lot of it has to do with the consistency of your paint. But even if it's a little bit subtle, or if it's really subtle, your, um, your eyes can pick that up. All right. Other horse. So again, I just fill it in kind of quickly. Once I've got that first layer completely done, I'll go through there and shape it. So paint, acrylic paint on the original over here. I mentioned earlier that I used a glossier paint. So it was also a thicker paint, more of what you call a heavy body paint. Not quite heavy body, but heavier body. And that basically just talks about the thickness of the paint, the viscosity. Okay. Over here was a thicker paint or heavier body. And over here was a more fluid or lighter body paint. So this lighter body paint flows a little more easily. It's a little smoother and possibly easier to uh, spread onto the canvas, whereas that one, I had to add a little bit more water to it to, to spread it more smoothly, make it smoother. Okay, so there are, not all acrylic paints are the same. And then there's artist grade and beginner grade. In some cases, you can even separate the artist grade to professional grade. They all have different um, qualities and price tags. So the paint over here is a little more expensive. This is a little less expensive, but they're both good paints, especially for more beginner projects. What some people like to do is they'll use the... Uh, cheaper paints to do the underpainting, the first layer of paint. And then they'll come back with either a mix of higher grade paint and lower grade paint for their next layers, or they'll, or they'll just come over with the higher grade paint on, the, on, the, uh, on subsequent layers. There's a lot to painting, folks. And don't don't uh, don't get me started on all on all the fillers and stuff, things that you can mix in, mediums that you can fix mix in with the paint to give them uh, different consistencies. You can use certain fillers to make almost like almost like three D molds on your painting. Okay, some of some some of them make them really glossy. Some of them make them um, more of a wash. Anyway, there's a lot to it. Right now we're scratching a big part of the surface, but nonetheless, a lot to painting. All right, there we go. So take a moment on that, folks. You got it, Rosemarie. My pleasure.
yeah, and if some of you don't want, again, I've talked about this earlier, but if you want to change things up, Rosemary just mentioned she's not going to add the birds on hers. Absolutely no problem. I think it'll work just fine with the birds. You could also even, uh, you know, put clouds up there if you want. Um, you could put the sun even if you wanted to. Maybe it's not a sunset. Maybe you got a moon, moon up on top, right? So there's different ways you can make this painting work. Andrea, yes, the video will be available immediately after the live session's over. You'll find this under the live tab on the main painting with Jesse Page here on Facebook. And you can also find it on my YouTube page. But all right, everyone, I think we're ready to move on. I'm going to go ahead and add. Let's see here. I'm going to add, by now my sun is dry. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and add my second layer there. Then I'm going to come up here and add stars up there. Okay, and then we'll we'll see where we go from there. But we're getting pretty close to, to the end here. Let's see. Let me grab my number, my my back to my Filbert, my good old trusty Filbert. It's gonna clean up my brush. In a moment, for those of you that are new to acrylic painting, not in a moment, but when we're done, I'm going to go over brush care. Yeah, I've done that. I think I've talked about brush care now a couple of times, my last couple of videos, but real briefly, won't take long for you, those of you that are new to acrylic painting. I'm going to grab some paint, white paint, right? Bring it over to my plate. I'm going to take some of my yellow that's still kind of fresh over here. Mix the two together. It's a little too light. Can add more, more yellow to this. I want this layer to be brighter than the first layer that I added so that when I put this down, the sun really stands out. All right, maybe a bit more. Here we go. Again, I'm going to concentrate on my edge first. Okay, and then I'm going to fill it in. All right. This one's probably a little too light, but nothing that a third layer won't fix. Okay, so work on that for a minute or two. We're going to add some stars to our sky here in a moment. And we're getting there. Bye, Allison. You got it. My pleasure. Thank you for being here today. Tabitha Johnson, you're very welcome. Thank you for hanging out with us today. And I got some paint on my pants. <laughs> yeah, the birds don't come till the very end, Allison. Okay. Let me take a little step back, look at my painting from a distance while you guys are catching up there. But okay, let's go ahead and do some stars. 
So the easiest way to put those little dots that you see up in that sky, you can take the back of one of your smaller brushes, okay? Dip it right into your white paint. Okay, and then you can kind of come in here and just start making little dots. The lighter the pressure, the smaller the dot. The harder you press down, of course, the bigger the dot gets. You can also use the tip of your brushes, the tip of the bristles on, the, on a round brush. I've got my little round zero in my hand. I'll use the bristles here in a second. But the handle's the easiest way to do these. You can put in as many stars as you want, as many or as few. Maybe your sky doesn't have any stars. If you're going to use the tip, you want to spin your brush when you dip it into the paint, press it against the plate or whatever you're using for a palette, spin it, make that point nice and skinny and small. Now when you press your bristles against the canvas, now I'm pressing my hand up against the canvas first. This is all dry. I can use this to support my hand. That allows me to control the pressure. Okay, so all this is dry. Whoops, too high, too high. By putting my hand here on the area that's dry, it allows me to control the pressure. So if I just barely touch the canvas, where I can put a little more pressure down, those stars get a little bit bigger. Okay, so you can use the back end of your handle, or you can use the bristles. Up to you. If you're new to making stars like these, you get a little practice on a piece of paper or cardboard or whatever. Now, on the, on the original, I brought some stars a little down in here, further closer to the horses, but they're really light, small ones. Again, as many or as few as you want. Okay. A few more. What the heck? Nice and easy. Okay. Now I'm done with those. With those. Now watch this really quick for those of you that might have done this in chalk. Just a quick demonstration. This area is dry. I, I can feel it. I can touch it and it's all nice and dry. For those of you that have to leave, if you did yours in chalk, I would dip my paper towel in the water cup. Or I can use fresh water for this. But I don't need a lot of water. Once my painting is all dry, I can do this all throughout the painting. But I can just kind of come over here and do this. <clears throat> I just took off all that chalk that was hanging out right there. This chalk in this area, same thing. Just be careful when you paint over your paint, when you brush over your painted area. But that's how you remove your chalk edges. Okay, whoops. <coughs> I had a little, excuse me, I had a little bit of uh, paint on the towel, so I got some over here. Still got to be careful when you do this, right? Otherwise, you get little messes like that. I'm going to use a fresh towel here. That little water that I'm using is a little dirty, so getting some paint streaks in, in there. I'm going to use some clean water for this. All right. Okay, so next step. I'm doing a third layer on my sun.
You got it, Tammy. Thank you for hanging out, at least for a little while. Linda Peters. Yep, absolutely. This video will be available immediately after. Again, both on Facebook and on YouTube. Okay? So all I'm doing, guys, is uh, just going to make more of a mix for my son. Maybe add a little bit more yellow this time to make it, make it uh, stand out. But not so that it looks like a moon instead of a sun. Where's my filbert? Okay, I'm gonna clean up my filbert a little, remove any extra other paint that's in there. I'm gonna grab a little bit of white, a little less this time. I'm gonna bring it over here, put down my plate. I'm gonna grab some yellow, bring that yellow over. This time I'm gonna make it a little bit more yellow, so again, it has more of a yellow hue to it. And here we go. Again, the main thing is you want it to uh, stand out against that background color. All right. This is going to do it for my son. Okay. There's that. What I'm going to do is... Yes, Linda Peters, exactly. So damp, just lightly damp, okay? Don't water it too much. Lightly damp cloth. Once you're... Once the painting's dried, obviously you don't want to do this over any areas that are still wet, so make sure you check. Sometimes it's a little deceiving. You can't always tell that something, something can look wet and you rush over and all of a sudden you're smearing paint across your canvas. So just make sure that the area is dry, then take a lightly damp cloth. Now you want to use, use clean water. Don't use the dirty water that I'm using. Use clean water and then just right over the top. Any areas like here, there's a little bit of chalk. Here there's a little bit of chalk. Just add a little bit of water to your paper towel and just lightly rub right over the top of that. Oftentimes, if I've got a lot, of, if I did a lot of drawing in chalk and there's lots of areas with chalk, I'll wait till the entire thing's totally dry, 10, 15 minutes after my painting's done. Then I'll take a paper towel, clean paper towel, clean water, nice and damp, and just rub right over the top. Lightly though, lightly. Be careful. Because if you use too much water or if the paint that you're using is a little on the thinner side, you can, even though it feels dry, you can still pull some paint off of that canvas. So be very careful. All right. One last thing that, we're, that we need to do here is we need to add some birds to our painting. And the birds are really tricky or they can be really tricky because they're so tiny. I'm going to show you a few birds on a paper plate. First, using my zero little tiny skinny brush, pointy thing. There's not a whole lot to these birds. There isn't a whole lot of detail. So don't, you know, don't get too caught up unless you've got a different type of bird that you'd like to add. These are just really basic birds going across my sky. Let me give you a close up of the birds. <clears throat> There's nothing fancy here. Most of these birds have a little center, like almost like a little dot here in the center. And I got a couple little wings coming off. Little dot in the center, a couple of wings coming off. Little center and wings, okay? And you can pretty much mimic that, copy that all the way down to wherever your birds are coming out of. Maybe like my birds are coming out of this tree. They're all hanging out in these trees and all of a sudden they took off. But the difference with most of them are going to be the shape of the wings that you give it. Give them. What you want to do, if you're new to making these kind of birds, add, make sure you add a little bit of water to your mixture of paint. A little tiny bit of water. You don't need a lot, but enough to make your paint easy to work with. And then what you want to do, I'm going to demonstrate on this plate, is spin your brush so that the tip gets nice and skinny. So. Here's one bird. Now I'm going to do this as close as I can so everyone can see. Little center. Okay, you got a little center. 
almost like a little dot. Okay? Then off of this dot, you can have a couple little wings that come out. Out and over. There's one wing. Okay? Other way. It's always tricky doing it standing up. Whoops. Okay? There's one bird. Okay? Everybody see that? It's got a little center and then a couple little wings coming off. Okay, let me do another one. And you're going to do as many of these as you want, right? So, again, the difference is the wings, the wingspan, or the curve of the wing. A little center. Let's make that one a little bit bigger. Okay? Now the wings are going to be a little more outstretched on this one. Up and over. Okay? Other way. Because these birds are so small, especially from a distance, once you start adding a whole bunch of them, they look like birds. Look like a little flock of birds. Okay, another one. This guy's back here. Curved wings. None to it. Okay, practice. Practice before putting them on your canvas. Okay? Very important. So here we go. I would recommend doing some big birds first and then slowly transition to smaller birds so that you've got some practice by the time you tackle those. Okay? But make sure you're adding a little bit of water to your paint. So same thing that I just did, I'm going to go ahead and do up here. Jessica Sigler, you got it. Have a great evening. Linda Peters, you're very welcome. Right here. Now, everyone's birds are going to be a little different, different places. They don't have to be in the exact same spots that I've got birds. All good. Okay, there's my start. There's my start. Maybe a couple of birds in with the sun in the background. A little center. Okay, the wings. Have fun, get creative with this. You can also do birds like this. Almost like, like if you're making a McDonald's M. Okay, but see that way back in the distance. <clears throat> the further back, the less detail they need. All right. And there we go. All right, does anybody have any questions? Give you guys a little time to work, to work on those. You got it, Crystal, my pleasure. Sue, my pleasure. So anyway, folks, that is, uh, that is how you make those little birds. Now, as you don't worry, as you guys are working on them, I'm just gonna keep talking a little bit here. A couple of things that you could do, um, maybe your area down here where the trees are, the ground, the horizon for that ground could use another layer of black paint. Okay, we only did one layer. For those of you that want to even those even that area out a bit, you would just simply take a brush, right? Just like what we did with the horses. Add a second layer of paint. The trees, I know some of the trees, I need to add a few more. Uh, a second layer to some of the some of the areas on the tree, like I did those 
the trees over on the edge. But you can um, refine the ground a bit. Whoops, got a little bit of black paint in my brush. Easily fixed. Okay. But um, take your little round brush or your flat brush or whatever you use to make those trees and then just come in and again be selective you can add a little layer of paint over i'm just taking my hand here i place it on my table i'm gonna pull back a bit somehow i got in tight don't know how that happened but um taking my hand put it on the table i'm working on an easel so it's a little easier for me to do this i'm just tapping certain parts of the tree to give it a little extra dimension here and there. And again, if you're really far behind, Hope you're not stressing. As soon as I'm done, you plan on continue painting. Um, you'll just continue with the recorded version. And please don't forget to send me pictures of your masterpieces. I like to share those with my Facebook and sometimes with my Instagram. So I can, uh, people, others can see what you all did. And people, not only that, but you guys can check out what you all did, right? And what everybody did, the, the different versions of what we're all, we're all doing the same thing, but everybody's turns out a little bit different. My pleasure, Stephanie Lynn. You're very welcome. Ruchika, my, my, uh, my pleasure. Thank you too. Linda Lewis, thank you. Crystal, Sarah, you have a great night too. So basically folks, that's pretty much the end of this, right? I'll show you guys in a little bit how to clean those brushes in case you know you haven't seen me talk about it before. So what I would do next, once when once I'm done with the piece, the very last thing I do, or second to last thing I do, it just depends, is I sign it. Now I didn't sign the original, but I would come over and I'd find a color that contrasts. I usually sign my piece down towards the bottom somewhere. So I'm going to use my round number three for this. And what the heck, I'm going to use a light blue to sign it. Why not? You can pretty much choose whatever color. There's no rule to what color you're going to use. It's up to you. I'm going to use a light blue. Okay, now what I like to do is I'll mix a little water into my paint. Since I'm signing and I need small skinny lines, the water is going to help. Then I spin the brush in the cup or in the plate. Come on over. Maybe over here on the left hand side. I like to sign with my last name. You can sign with your first name. You can sign your initials, your nickname, whatever you want. Once I've signed it, again, since I'm sitting here with my canvas on an easel, I'll go ahead and paint this bottom edge. I'm just going to come on over and do this. Paint the bottom edge all the way across. Okay. I would let, I would then leave that there to dry. Okay, I'm going to turn it over just for because I know some of you guys are probably still using it as reference. However, once I've once I turn off the video, once we're done, I'm going to flip this back over on because I don't want this to glue. The paint might glue to the easel. It might be a little hard to take off. But um, now that I'm done, right, again, everything's dry. I come in here with my paper towel and I do this where any, anywhere that I have chalk, mark, chalk marks, I just wipe them off. They come right off. Any of those little chalk lines that peek, peek around my edges, they come right off. Okay, nice and easy. Don't rub too hard. 
Careful you don't do that over wet paint. And those chalk lines will all just come right off. Okay. Now, as far as brush care, what you want to do is you want to take your brushes. And you, the sooner you do this after you're done with the painting, the better. Okay. Even this, and I know I've never mentioned this before simply because just, just not something that pops up too much. Even what the brushes sitting in your water cup like this can damage the bristles. It can start to warp them a bit. So as soon as you're done painting, you take your brushes, go over to your sink, or wherever you're gonna clean the brushes, add a little bit of mild detergent, clean them up. And then what you wanna do, once they're nice and clean, reform, reshape them, put them back into their normal shape. Okay, all of your brushes, do that with all of your brushes. Then what you'll do, you can either store them like in another cup, facing upwards, all your brushes facing upwards, or on their side. You don't want any pressure on the bristles. You don't want the brushes to, to sit like this for a long time. Over time, the bristles will start to get damaged. Okay, so little little mild soap and detergent. Oh, a little bit of mild soap and water will clean them up. You don't want the paint to dry on the bristles or it will damage them. Okay? But all right, everyone, that is the end of our session for today. Okay, I just want to thank everyone for hanging out with me today. I really do appreciate it. I currently, as I mentioned earlier, I only have two events currently scheduled for the rest of the month, but I will be adding more. So please make sure you guys are looking out for those. Also, if you're new to the page, please make sure you like and follow whether you're on Facebook or on uh, YouTube. I'm also on Instagram under Painting with Jesse, all exactly the same, Painting with Jesse on all three of the platforms. I am going to be going over, over to TikTok here pretty soon, start posting on there and then creating maybe little tutorials when I can post. You have to have like a thousand followers there first before you can actually start doing live videos. So once I get to a thousand there, um, I'll start streaming to uh, TikTok as well. But anyway, folks, I just want to thank everyone for being here. Make sure you guys go check out the live tab on the Painting with Jesse page here on Facebook so you can look at all the old videos that we've got available for you to paint along with. Make sure you guys stick around. And uh, if you guys want to learn how to use brushes, what, what brushes you use when, et cetera, what all the different brushes can do, make sure you guys are keeping your eyes peeled for when I post. Uh, when that session is going to be sometime within the next couple of weeks, I'll have that session. Okay. So make sure you guys are looking out for that. Again, I just want to thank everyone. Please be sure to uh, send me pictures of your stuff. Also, if you guys could on the main painting with Jesse page here on Facebook, if you guys could check in, that would be awesome. There's a way on the main page. If you click on the little dots over on the, I think they're on the right hand side of the page. You can check into the page. Okay. That helps the Facebook algorithm. If you're on YouTube, please leave me a comment. Say hello. Say whatever you'd like to say. Leave a comment on, under the video. That way, same thing. The YouTube algorithm sees uh, sees that there's activity on the on the um, video, and they're more likely to promote the page to others. Okay. And then, lastly, of course, for those of you that would like to help out, uh, help support the page, uh, I do have a virtual tip jar. The information is at the bottom of the screen there. It's also listed under the description of the video. Okay, so if you guys are interested in that, that's where that is. Anyway, everybody, hope you guys have an amazing rest of the evening, and I will see you guys all very soon. Please send me any questions, etc., cetera, via messenger on Facebook. You can also reach me on email through uh, paintingwithjesse at gmail.com. All right, everybody, you guys have an awesome night, and I will see you guys all very soon. Bye-bye. Have a good one.